Father, uh, we're here one more time just to give you worship. We pray that as we're about to lift your name up high, pray that you would come into our places, come into our hearts, and simply just have us pray and play both a true and beautiful song to you. God, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you and around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming in your going in your weeping Rejoicing, he is for you, 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 he is for you. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to praise you through this online worship. Please use this worship and Ms. Jin's sermon for us to get closer to you. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Praise Team. Thank you, Rachel, for opening up our hearts uh, for worship. Last week, we were able to see all the high schoolers, those of you who attended. Hope you had a blessed full worship. Um, just seeing you um in face it was at first everyone was like oh this is so awkward but it was really good to see you today we actually have the middle schoolers um in person at church and i just want to say thank you for all of you who attended to just kind of follow the rules and you know listen to our directions it it, it, it was a great experience i i i really enjoyed seeing all of you and um it was really exciting. So today we're going to continue on our journey of giving thanks. So in November, instead of just talking about giving Thanksgiving, you know, in a, in, in a sort of in a general way, like, yeah, just say thank you and whatnot. We are using the word thank to dive deeper and using the scriptures and really thinking about what it is that we have to thank. Who do we thank and how do we thank? So the first week we went with the letter T and it was to think, right? To remember all the great things that God has done for you and your family and your friends and never forget them. Because once we forget we forget about Thanksgiving, then it turns into complaints. Then it turns into I'm not happy with what I have because what you have is not important to you. But when we remember and think about how good God is, how great our family is, our friends who just love us for who we are, we're able to think and give thanksgiving. Last week, we talked about Holy Spirit. That was the second letter of the word thank. And to really uh, thank the Holy Spirit who abides in us the minute we accept Jesus Christ. We don't need, only want to abide by the Holy Spirit, but we really want the Holy Spirit to allow to work in our hearts. So there are things that you may have a uh, hard time doing or uncomfortable or awkward, but you have the courage to do it because the one in you is greater than the one of the world. And it is this Holy Spirit that makes you into someone that you thought you weren't. Um, we're all born with a certain personality and temperament, but it is through the Holy Spirit that we become more and more like Jesus Christ. So if people see you and say, you know what, oh my goodness, you're, you're like a little Jesus, then, then that is actually what we want to kind of live for. Today, we're going to go over the third letter of the word thank. And in general, I just wanted one word. And that one word is allow. Before we dive in, let's read the scriptures together. And today's scriptures come from Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. So let's read it together in one voice and one heart. Ready? 
Begin. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Amen. Last week during our closing, I talked about a verse uh, from 2 Timothy that Paul wrote. And during that time, you know, when he was writing different letters, he was in prison, he was beaten, he was on house arrest, getting ready for trial. So the book of Colossians is also during a time when he was under a house arrest. So we know being under a house arrest just a tad bit because during the earlier part of the pandemic, we were at home. We had that stay at home order unless you were an essential worker or you were out to get food. Um, so I remember during that time, my boys and I turned whiter than we are because we didn't really get sunlight. We didn't know if we could go outside and we can't we couldn't go to the beach. We couldn't go to the park. You know, we're pretty much at home. 24 seven. Um, I was not about to take my boys to any markets cause we didn't know about this COVID-19 virus. And, you know, so it was very hard to stay at home. Well, Paul was under this house arrest and we can only assume that, you know, he was probably under this house arrest, not because he was a criminal, not because he robbed or he, he did something, but his biggest crime was probably the fact that he was a follower of Christ and he was probably living his life as a child of God and this is Paul we're talking about Paul who had the Roman citizenship which is huge Paul who probably graduated from like a great Ivy League type of college as we would call it now Paul who was an apprentice to this famous scholar was under house arrest he claims whatever he has, he considers it dung. Like he considers it poop because he thinks being a follower of Christ, Christian, is so much more. So during this house arrest, you know, I would, to be honest, if I was under house arrest uh, for Jesus, that would be great. But I would be writing letters if I could have access to the outside world, trying to kind of figure out a way, get me out of here. You know, like, I don't know, dig a hole and like, help me escape or create some scene outside so I can, you know, come out or talk to the, the, the trial judge or something, right? No, Paul doesn't do anything like that. The letters that he writes during this time of house arrest and the letter to Colossae is one of the letters is he is trying to dispel the false accusations of Christ. He's trying to uh, prove that there are false teachers out there. There's this heretical movement going on, and you guys need to stay alert. The minute you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, the only uh, way to show it is, is by living a holy life. And the word holy means to be set apart, to live a life apart from the world, different from the world as a child of God. So during the letter, in the letter of uh, Colossians, I, I would recommend you read it. It's not a long uh, book. There are a couple of chapters. But in it, it talks about how we should be living as wives, as husbands, as deacons, as leaders of the, uh, of the church, and as Christians. And in, in part of this letter, he actually wrote um, the verse that we read today. And he was really, really worried about this heretical movement. And the way he kind of defined heresy is this, is this deceptive view of Christ that runs, uh, that, that ruins our lives. And when we think about the word deceptive view, it kind of has a root word with the deceit. And we know that Satan is what? Father of lies, right? He's a deceitful in, in whatever way is very deceitful to try to uh, just get a twisted view of the truth and then makes us to doubt and wonder if Jesus is for real. And, and, and Paul felt very, very compelled to write a letter to the people of Colossae to say, no, you guys know who Jesus is. Don't allow people to fool you. Don't allow people to run your lives, but you know who Jesus is. And it is this peace of Christ that runs through our lives. We're all one body, and it is the supremacy of Christ, who is the, the head of the church, who is the creator, who knows us inside out. 
who then died for us and is a savior, is superior in our lives, and you know who Jesus is. Don't let anyone uh, fool you and don't allow other people to deceive you. And Paul is writing uh, to the believers of Colossae. Um, so when, when I looked into the book of Colossians and the letter, you know, and I thought about giving thanks, uh, you, you may be thinking at this point, so what does that have to do with giving thanks? Well, the third letter that I want to talk about today, besides to think about giving thanks, to depend on the Holy Spirit as we give thanks, to abide and to uh, live according to it, the letter A is allow. And when we say allow, um, Allow people to thank you. Okay, I'm going to say it again because you're probably like, what? What did she say? Allow people to thank you. I know when we're young and our mommies and daddies, we always say, say thank you, say thank you. You need to be thankful. You need to thank this and thank that and be grateful and all that. But we, I think, forget to mention to you sometimes that, you know what? You can be thanked too. Allow people to thank you. To receive gratitude is another way of being thankful and showing gratitude. Um, we allow people to do many things to us. And sometimes they're very negative things. We don't know why, but we allow people to tease us and we allow that negative feeling to get to us and we fight back. We allow people to define who we are. And when they define us in a negative way, we know we're not. And we can only think, you know what, you don't really know me. But we allow them to define us. And then we kind of either shrivel up and say, oh, I'm not worthy because people are defining us that way. Or we fight back again and say, well, blah, blah, blah. You know, we allow people to break our hearts. And when they do, we then go and break other people's hearts. We allow people to mock the name of Christ. And instead of defending it, when people mock the name of Christ and we allow it, our faith starts to shrink. There's a lot of things that we allow people to do in our lives. And before we dive into uh, some of the appropriate and the true way of accepting and allowing people to thank us, I want you to, at this time, take a sheet of paper if you have. And we're just going to, it can be a scratch paper. But on one side of the paper, I want you to write, what do you? Uh, these are some of the examples that I thought of. What do you let people allow to do in your lives? Some negative things. You, know, you didn't really think about it, but you know what? Listening to the examples that Mrs. Jin just gave, yeah, you know, I kind of allow people to break my heart. I kind of allow people to control my life and, and get me so angry and get me so upset. And I, I, I allow that. You know, write some things that you think you allow. Okay, let me give you a couple of seconds. Um, what do you let people allow you to do to your life? Some negative things. Just jot them down. You can think it. You can ponder on it. You can actually write it. Then on the back of this paper, then, I want you to write, what do you allow yourself to do that is negative to other people? What do you allow yourself to do to other people that are negative? Because, I mean... We want to be honest. We do hurt other people. We do affect people in a negative way. What, what are those things? I want you to kind of write that down. I actually really would recommend you do this on a piece of paper because I want to do something with this piece of paper. But if you're feeling like, you know, I just want to think about it, that's okay too. Uh, those of you uh, who are at church, we'd be doing something with this. And those of you at home, after you write what people do to you and you allow it, what you do to other people that you allow yourself to hurt other people, tease other people, whatever, after you wrote it down, I want you to crumple this piece of paper, like crumple it as hard as you can, and I want you to throw it on the ground. Those of you who are at home or at church, you're going to pick it up later, but it's going to go in the trash can because it does not belong in our minds, and it definitely does not belong in our hearts. The minute 
we allow people to affect us in a negative way. The minute we allow ourselves to affect people in a negative way is basically saying that, you know what, we're allowing us to hurt Jesus. And I don't know if we ever thought about it that way. The minute we allow other people to break our hearts and you get mad and you react to it, that means you are uh, totally ignoring the spirit that resides in you. You are totally negating and saying, you know what, Jesus, I knew it. If I, if I believed in you, why would you let my heart break? If I believe in you, why would you let these things happen? And we just become very superficial and we just totally uh, ignore, avoid, erase the name of Jesus. On the other hand, if we allow ourselves to hurt other people, basically we're saying, yeah, you know, Jesus, you're nothing. I am above you. And I will do to other people what I think is right. If they need revenge, I will revenge. If, if they hurt me, I hurt them. If that's just the logic. We allow so many things to happen in our lives. But today I want us to ponder because giving thanks is allowing people to be thankful to you too. Allow Jesus to commend you. Allow Jesus to say, you know what? I'm super thankful that you are my child. And you think, what? Really? Yeah. Jesus wants to compliment you and commend you and say how great you are all the time. If anyone asks me, you know, uh, what, what is your dream in life? What is your vision in life? Uh, last week when we met at the praise team and we we're talking about, you know, some of their future goals and whatnot, I said, you know, Mr. Jin is older than you guys, but I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Like, I still want to go back to school. I still want to do a lot of things. I don't want just, I don't live for today, but I want to, like, go to school, I want to maybe study different area that I've never studied. You know, there's a lot of things that I want to do. I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. But besides that, if they ask me, but what is your true purpose in living every day? And put it in a phrase. I thought about it all week and I thought, you know, the only way I can say it is I, my, my dream, my goal, my purpose of breathing, existing is really to please God. I want to live my moment, my day, my days, my week, my years to please God. I want God to tell me that when I see him in heaven, you know, day, I am so happy to see you and I'm thankful that you lived as my child. We want Jesus to be thankful for us. It sounds kind of weird, but I... I I think so. We want to allow people to say thank you to you because the minute you accept their gratitude, it just fills our heart. And now we can be thankful and show thanksgiving. I know in the Asian culture, you know, and, and my parents have, you know, raised me that way. You know, they never really say thank you. And it was only not until I got way, way older. When I was young, I don't think they said like, oh, thank you for doing this. Thank you for this. Thank you for being you. Because it was just assumed that we do it. We do part of the chores because we're all part of the family, right? Loyalty. We do the best job in, in our school because our parents worked so hard for us and they immigrated from Korea and that's what we got to do, you know? I don't think I've ever heard like, oh, thank you so much for doing your homework, right? Uh, do you guys hear a lot of thank you at home? Thank you, brother, for helping me. Thank you, sister, for being so cute. You know, thank you, son, for being such a great son. Do, do we hear that? And if we do... We, we don't know how to handle ourselves. It took me a long time. When people say, oh, day, thank you so much for this. I'm like, oh, no. I, I like run away because I don't know what to say. Like to say you're welcome, it seems like so weird and arrogant. Like I don't want to say you're welcome. And I'm like, oh, no, that was nothing. You know, so I would like mask and say, oh, yeah, anybody can do that. You know, that was nothing. It took me a lot of practice and say, oh, you're welcome. You know, oh, you know, uh, yeah, no problem. Right. Because I wasn't built. A, I wasn't raised in that culture of people always saying thank you to me. But in the month of November, and I hope starting today, I want you to practice and allow people to thank you. When people say thank you to you sincerely and intentionally, I want you to look at them and say, you know what? You're welcome. No problem. 
And remember that we are wonderfully and fearfully made, and God thinks the universe of you. And God is thankful and proud and super uh, happy when he sees you, and that's what we want to live by. You know, for whatever reason, after we reach a certain age, you know, I hear that a lot, like, oh, you know, my son is an adolescent, or, oh, yeah, I'm a teenager. Um, yeah, I'm going through pre, pre, pre-adolescent. Or, oh, you know, my daughter is just having a hard time during her teenage puberty years, you know. And I think I told you this once before, but yes, during this adolescent years, your hormones are going wild. You are growing, boys. You have, like, a burst of, like, cells and everything going on in your head that sometimes you have impulsive action and everybody's like what i can't believe you did that yeah it's all part of growing we understand your parents understand but after a while i think even parents and you guys too you use that as a ticket to get away ah yeah i'm a a teenager oh my son's a teenager you know going through this natural developmental stage of a pre-adolescent adolescent and almost sort of being a grown-up does not give you a ticket to be a punk. And I said it. It does not give you a ticket to be rude. It does not give you a ticket to be like uh, very oppositional and disrespectful to your parents, to the church, to your teachers, to your friends, to your siblings. No, that does not give you a license to be a non-Christian. We, the minute we accept Jesus Christ, we try to live like Christ. No matter how old you are. You don't see grandma saying, oh, I'm grandma, so I cannot praise God. Eh, we got some grandmas out there that are just praising the Lord, right? You don't see daddies out there like, oh, I, I'm a dad, so I should not praise. We have a lot of fathers out there who praise, who cries, who worships. It's not about age. But yet, for some reason, during this pre-adolescent, adolescent teenage years, we, we think that just gives you a pass to do something that you shouldn't. And I, I don't agree with that. For whatever reason, we reach a certain age and we're too cool for Bible study. I just want to let you know that you are never too cool for Bible study. And if you think you are, you are a fool. And I was writing this and I was like, oh, it sounds like a rap. If you think you're too cool for Bible study, you're you're a fool. And then I thought, yeah, I better not wrap it because I don't want you guys to, you know, turn me off or like walk away. But yeah, for whatever reason, at certain age, you think you're too cool for Bible study. But I'm here to say, you know what? That's very foolish because the word of living God has to be with you and by you all the time. If you think I've never heard Jesus saying thank you to me, I've never heard people appreciating me. You know, I want you to look within yourself and think, how much are you with Jesus? How much are you giving thanks to Jesus? That's number one. I feel like thank- giving thanks, has it's like, a, it's like a coin. It has two faces. Yeah, one part we overemphasize is like, yeah, saying thank you, being intentional, thinking about it, abiding by the Holy Spirit, super important. But the other face of this coin is really accepting people's thanksgiving accepting their gratitude in a humble way and giving it back. If you think you've never heard Jesus being thankful of you and who you are, I want you to maybe kneel down and close your ears to the outside world and listen carefully. Because I think every moment, every day, God is telling you something and reminding you how wonderful you are. Last week during our high school worship, you know, uh, youth said, you know, I, I'm, I'm meditating on the book of Psalms this, these days, and I feel like it's like a love letter from Jesus. And I got chicken skin and goosebumps. I'm like, love letter? Think every time you do devotionals, you're reading a love letter from Jesus Christ. How awesome is that? But here's the critical factor. You have to be in love with Jesus. Or it's just another letter. Or it's just another written document. If you're in love with Jesus, the Bible will seem like a love letter. The Bible will seem like your guide, your teacher. An advocate that Jesus promised that he would send because he he knew we needed his help. Today he tells us the peace of Jesus Christ 
has to rule in our hearts. In order to give true thanksgiving and understand that we're all one body of Christ. If you hurt, I hurt. If I allow you to hurt me, you hurt too. If I allow myself to hurt you, I hurt too. And this is why Jesus said, let the peace of Jesus Christ rule our hearts. Because we're one body and to be thankful was the last part of this verse. Today, I just wanted to mention the two important things. Allow people to give you thanks. We do not allow people to break our hearts. We do not break our heart, other people's heart. We allow Accept their gratitude. Yes, you can. Accept their thanksgiving. Yes, you can. And allow Jesus to commend you and to thank you for being who you are because Jesus died for you. Let's pray. Father God, ever since when we could probably speak, we were taught to say thank you. 감사합니다. 고맙습니다. But I think we kind of forgot that, you know what? People can thank us too. We live for you, Jesus, to commend us and say how great we're doing and saying, you know what? Thank you for helping my other child. Thank you for praying for my other country that I, I'm sad about. We want to hear the thanksgiving from other people as well. Father, we want to live our lives to please you. We want to remember this peace that transcends through all understanding to rule our hearts so that we know that we are one body. If other people hurt, I hurt. And if we hurt, Father God, you hurt. And we want to eliminate that. We want to be thankful by loving on one another, to give thanks and to receive thanks. So Father, would you... As the month of November kind of closes down and 2020 comes to a close, help us to live for you and truly understand the meaning of giving thanks. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for enlightening us. And Father, we love to please you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue to worship God as we collect the offering and our tithes. Lord bless you. Father, uh, this year hasn't. This year has been pretty rough for quite a lot of people, Lord, and this year hasn't really gone as as everyone expected it to. But we are slowly rebuilding, Lord, and um, I know that our church has even reopened, Lord, to give some people the chance to come back to church and to worship under you, Lord. And for all of this, we thank you, Lord. We also want to thank you for protecting a lot of us uh, from this pandemic and keeping us safe. Um, there, I know that we know that there have been a lot of people out there who have really been struggling, Lord. And we pray that you will help give them guidance, Lord, and you will protect them, Lord, um, to keep them safe. We, we're very grateful, Lord, for everything that you've already done for us, Lord, even through these bad times. And that's only because of you and your your ceaseless love. And that is something that none of us could repay to you, Lord. 
hopefully there will be a foreseeable future for all of us, Lord. But until then, uh, we thank you, Lord. We love you. And in your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. We welcome you here to our worship. We want to invite all of you to our weekly Bible studies. If you have not joined us, please let us know and we can get you plugged in so you can have fellowship, game, and just diving deeper into God's Word. For next week, Helen will be praying for us, Luke will be reading our scripture, and Brian will be doing offering prayers. Please send me the clips by November 17th, and we'll see you soon. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.